X cheated on me and falsely accused me of, so I exposed her to everyone she knew. In late May 2016, I invited my longtime infatuation, Kate, out on a coffee date, which she agreed to. After three dates, we were able to finalize our agreement. We had a relationship that seemed almost too wonderful to be true for the following seven months. We had so many common interests that we almost ever disagreed on anything. We were extremely honest with each other, which resulted in a fantastic life. We both had decent careers, so we had money to pamper one another, and both of our families were supportive of our relationship. In January 2017, I was accepted into the Armed Forces Reserve Program of my nation, where I would serve as a combat engineer. I was in basic training from February to late April, and it was the most difficult thing I had ever done up to that point in my life. There were multiple occasions when I doubted my ability to complete my degree, and the only thing that kept me going was Kate's words of encouragement, which she sent me through text and phone conversations. She was there when I obtained my BTC certificate, and she never failed to express her delight in my accomplishments. As a member of the reserves, I was required to attend advanced training during the summer months, which took place between early June and late August. Kate was very supportive of my decision to go 400 kilometers away to the training center and spend almost the entire summer vacation working to further my military career. The summer was really difficult for me. I was a social outsider from every cleat that developed on our course and was the brunt of countless jokes during the summer. My self-esteem had sunk to dangerously low levels, but Kate's confidence in me was what helped me to triumph. I finished fifth overall in the race, and I owe everything to her. The decline in the number of people after arriving home, the relationship between us began to deteriorate. According to Vera hadn't been as spontaneous and outgoing as I had been before I left on the trip. Rather than going out, I was dismissive, taking little jabs or practical jokes as personal insults, and preferring to remain home and watch movies and have rather than going out. It was completely unknown to either of us that I had acquired severe social anxiety as a result of the events of the summer which had begun to have an effect on our relationship. In 2018, as we approached our two-year anniversary, we got into a furious disagreement over a minor misunderstanding and ended up breaking up. I was in a state of complete and utter despair until she contacted me three days later to say she wanted to try to make things right. I hadn't seen her in three weeks, but we maintained in contact on a daily basis and things were slowly getting better. As soon as we were reunited on an official basis, nothing seemed the same. Everything I said to her made me feel as if I were walking on eggshells, which just exacerbated my nervousness, which exacerbated our already troubled relationship. Afterwards, around the end of July, everything finally came to a head. I'm in pain. Kate had met a guy called John when she was still in school. She saw in John what she had previously seen in me, and the two immediately became very good friends. He comforted her throughout our split and later, and he was there for me whenever I made a mistake. For the fact, I was aware of John's existence, but did not anticipate Kate engaging in any kind of relationship with him. I was supposed to spend the night at Kate's apartment after work on one of the nights we had scheduled. I walked inside the house to see the two of them relaxing on the living room sofa. Kate informed John that he had stopped by for an impromptu visit and that he was about to leave. Following John's departure, she became cold and aloof. I gradually came to terms with the fact that our relationship was over and inquired as to how things were going between us. She agreed with my points of view, and the following day, we decided to call it quits. She agreed to let me spend the night one more time, despite the fact that it was late and she was still concerned about me. Kate became unusually attached to and protective of her phone from that point on till she fell asleep. In the past, she wouldn't have cared if I happened to peek over and saw her and her pals texting about whatever they were talking about, but now she was doing all she could to keep the device hidden from me. When I inquired about it, she responded that it was personal information, which simply created additional issues. My curiosity got the better of me after she fell asleep and I opened her phone, for which I had the password, and discovered hundreds of texts between her and John, who I had never met before. Messages about how she was suddenly single how great it was that they could now be seen together in public, and how she was laughing at everything I did. I cried in the background as I read through each heartbreaking communication. My sobbing wasn't as silent as I had anticipated. Kate started to stir, and when she understood what I was doing, she erupted in rage. Instead of confronting her, I just took my belongings and walked out the door.
with Kate cursing and screaming at me the whole time I was gone. When I returned home, it was late in the morning. I simply broke down and ugly sobbed all night. The next day, I phoned an ill to work and spent the whole day moping about in my bed. The next day, I received a flurry of furious text messages from Kate's friends and family. So she told everyone she knew that I had forced myself on her that night in one final attempt to get some before we broke up, and that I had fled after the act was completed, all in an effort to protect her reputation and condemn whatever I may say about her. Despite the fact that what I had done was scoring, she declined to pursue charges because she didn't want to create a spectacle of her life in court and that she was the greater person by refusing to do so. I spent the next several months living in terror that her allegations would result in my dismissal from the army and the tarnishing of my reputation for the rest of my life, but nothing happened. The retaliation. Five months later, Kate sent me a direct message. After a few niceties, she essentially apologized for the entire event, and she even confessed to fabricating it. But she would never acknowledge it publicly to protect her own reputation by image B. This infuriated me, but I maintained my composure. I took screenshots of the messages and carried on the conversation with her. Over the course of the next three months, she went into a cycle of events that included the following. Grumble about a current life predicament, generally including John messing up in their relationship in some manner, and seek advice from other people. Complaining about our relationship, how I never made the same mistakes as John, how she wishes we could go back to the way things were and so on. John is ignoring me, because he has finally gotten his head out of his and made some grand romantic gesture that has salvaged his relationship, making false statements about our relationship on social media, enlisting the assistance of her friends, fully aware that I would be able to view everything, and attempting to provoke me into a fight with her. Once she saw it was working, she would attempt to flip the conversation around and portray me as the bad person, and then she would block me for about a month before resuming the cycle. This happened to me three times in a row each time leaving me exhausted and devastated, but a part of me wished it would happen to me again. Every time it happened, I took screenshots of everything, she said to prove she was telling the truth. It took me a while to determine it was time since I had a full SD card with everything I had accumulated. Making Several photocopies of the worst of the worst text messages I had discovered. I purchased several manila envelopes and mailed them to everyone I thought would be important to Kate her parents, grandparents, extended family with whom she was extremely close, best friends, work boss, co-workers, teachers, and anyone else I could find a mailing address for. I was able to find mailing addresses for everyone I thought would be important to Kate. The messages were between me and Kate, so I made sure everyone who received them understood that they were between us before sending them. I saw improvements in as little as three weeks. Some of the individuals who had previously messaged me in order to disgrace and criticize me have now expressed regret for their actions. My favorite letter came from her own parents, who went on to say that they were deeply sorry for their daughter's behavior, that they had raised her to be better than she acted, and that they asked that I not pursue legal action. The idea had crossed my mind, but I lacked the financial means or the mental fortitude to fight a legal battle. I assured them I'd think about it, and that they'd be the first to know if I decided to go forward with it other than Kate. Kate also texted me, saying things like how could you violate my trust in such a way? And, you wrecked my life, you among other things. Without responding, I just read every furious text that came in with a delighted smile and then banned her when the messages stopped coming in. While I never learned the entire extent of the damage done to her life by my vengeance, I do know that she dropped out of school and no longer had a place to call home. I'm hoping John was worth the effort. Edit, thank you so much to everyone for their lovely words of encouragement. I realized that a lot of people were concerned about my mental health, so I decided to alleviate their concerns. After three months of therapy sessions, I made considerable strides in my recovery from depression. I can't even begin to express how grateful I am to her for her assistance in restoring some sort of normality to my life.